ambush us? No. They were just digging through these abandoned ruin guards looking for something of value. Oh, is that so? The Traveler here seems to like doing that a lot, too. Looking for chaos devices, chaos circuits, you know, that kind of stuff. Hmm. They wouldn't be searching for such ordinary objects. In fact, I was nearby investigating precisely because abyss mages often come out from that ruin to explore. They seem to be searching the remains of ruin guards for a certain valuable object to take back to the ruins. However, they look disappointed, so it would seem they haven't found it yet. Well then, why didn't you grab one of them just now and ask what they were up to? I certainly don't mean to be merciful towards these monsters of the abyss. But I have a feeling that their plan with this object is of major importance to the entire Abyss Order. One cannot discover the truth behind it through interrogation. Or rather, these Abyss Mages likely fear something else much more than they do a painful interrogation. Uh, Paimon is getting goosebumps thinking about all of this. Alright, we shouldn't waste too much time here. Let's continue our search. Wow! Besides the Abyss Order, Ruin Guards sure are active around here. Hmm, seems wherever we find an Abyss Mage hideout, there's often a bunch of Ruin Guards roaming around too. Is that just a coincidence? Or... There are no coincidences in the world. Everything is the fruit of seeds planted long ago. Just like your appearance in that tavern. Time is just waiting for those seeds to sprout. Forget it. Just some needless musings. The connection between the Abyss Order and the Ruin Guards is by no means incidental. Rather, they are both branches that have grown out and up from the same roots below. Branches? Roots? What do you mean exactly? Both originate from an ancient nation that was destroyed 500 years ago. Conria. Huh? Conria? Really? The Abyss Order and Ruin Guards are left over from after the destruction of that nation? Oh. Speaking of Conria, that's really a super ancient name! Oh! <laughs> Right. As your guide, Paimon should explain a bit here. A long time ago, the nation of Conria was... Huh? You have memories of being there. But that nation was destroyed 500 years ago! Hmm... Is that so? Well, everyone has their secrets. You did not pry into mine, so I shall not pry into yours. But, if you would like to tell me... I will listen. So, the Kanria you saw, what was it? So that's the complete story, huh? Paimon thought that you ran into that unknown god first. I see. So your first memory after coming to this world was being awoken by your sister from within that meteorite. It seems your sister woke up first. But the question is, how long before you? And then your sister told you that the destruction of Kanria plunged the whole world into chaos, and that you two should leave this world called Tevat? The destruction of Kanria? She said that? That destruction you witnessed, that's... history from 500 years ago. It seems the first time you awoke in this world was indeed during that period. Huh. So your sister must have understood this world better than you did, because she woke up first. And it was shortly after that that you encountered an unknown god who blocked your path, so you couldn't escape. Oh, Paimon knows this part really well. I understand. When you awoke at that time and hurriedly tried to leave for another world, you didn't know anything about Kanria. But now, since you have come to gain some understanding of Tevat, you are able to guess that the war you witnessed all those years ago must be the war that ended Kanria. Am I right? Ah, 
If that's the case, you must have been flipping through all sorts of books during our adventure these past few months. Before going to Mondstadt, you had just looked at some vague materials. Later, we managed to gather a whole bunch of old books from all around Mondstadt and Liyue, but you told Paimon they were useless. So, the whole time you were just trying to learn more about Conria so you could find your sister? Oh, yeah! You can travel around the Seven Nations to find the Seven. But where can you go to find a nation that was destroyed 500 years ago? I probably know more about Kanria than both of you. Kanria was a nation without a god. Not because it had a god that died or abandoned them, but because it never had a god to begin with. It was a powerful nation, built purely by humans. An unprecedented, flourishing, and glorious civilization. It was the pride of humankind. A nation without a god? Later events unfolded just as you remember. It was all destroyed... by gods. You mean that... Five hundred years ago, the gods descended upon the world and brought desolation to Kanya. The pride of humankind was uprooted and crushed, like a weed removed from the garden of the gods. How could that be? The history books don't say anything about that! Yes, well, continuing to discuss the past now will only dampen our spirits. Let's keep moving. I will tell you more of what you want to know as we continue our search. Over there! It's more ruin guards and abyss mages! Dane was just saying how these ancient machines are from Conria. Hmm. So, did Conria have a lot of ruins that needed to be guarded? No. Ruin Guard is the name modern people have given these machines. No one called them that 500 years ago. These Ruin Guards were known as Field Tillers by the people of Kanria. Field Tillers? What a strange name. It's not like you think. Field Tiller was just a code name. The people of Kanria like to give code names to their weapons. The land is not to be tilled with farming tools, but rather is to be fought for with steel and blood. This is how the field tiller came about. Fought for with steel and blood? Well, that's an interesting way of understanding tilling. Uh, Paimon doesn't think it's a very positive interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> After the destruction of Kanria, these masterless field tillers went completely out of control. They wandered aimlessly over the centuries, gradually spreading to every corner of Tevat, perhaps resonating with the sorrow of other civilizations lost to time. They found their way to various ruins across the land, where they lie dormant. That sounds... so sad. Once you understand more, those details won't mean much to you. But no matter their past, all that remains of them now is the danger they pose. So destroy them all. Huh? This abyss mage dropped a talisman. <sighs> Could it be a communication of some kind? Hmm. This talisman seems connected to the abyss herald. But why would an abyss mage be carrying it? Perhaps it really does contain information about their operation. But Paimon can't read the writing on it. Is that the script of Conria? Engulf the faith of an enemy in flame, and bring glory to her highness, the princess. What? Is that what it says? Loom of fate, initial operation. They, the abyss, seem to be carrying out a large operation. The key word here is loom of fate. It seems like they are still launching the operation, or rather, are still conducting preliminary tests. Loom of Fate? What's that? Is it literally a... Fate-weaving machine? From the horrible feeling Paimon's been getting, those eerie ruins are super likely to be related to this Fate-weaving operation. So, Dane, what message does this talisman contain? I'm reading it now. Hmm... An ambitious operation. But some parts are difficult to understand. How so? 
In short, the first phase of the plan is related to Osail, Overlord of the Vortex. The Overlord of the Vortex? You mean that god in the ocean? What do they want with Osail? Uh... I know of your past heroics regarding Dvalin. And I also know of the Abyss Order's role in the Storm Terror incident. Though you may not have been aware of it at the time, you were thwarting an Abyss Order operation similar to this one. Last time it was Venti's old friend. This time it's a huge ancient god. The Abyss Order keeps setting their sights higher and higher. Will the Abyss Order use their lies and dark magic to corrupt Osail, just as they did Dvalin? No. From the contents of the Talisman, this operation goes one step further. They won't just corrupt Osile's mind. They also plan to use the ancient technology behind the Field Tillers to completely transform Osile's body. Is... that even possible? So wait, the Abyss Order wants to make some sort of cybernetic squid god of mass destruction? Very few people today truly understand the civilization of Kanria. Though, of course, the accuracy of that understanding itself is difficult to judge. Only the Abyss Order has consistently sought out the remnants of Kanria. Despite being far from human, they seek out this lost human civilization quite persistently. The Talisman's message states that they will use the defiled statue as a base attaching Osile's limbs to construct a mechanized god. And the new core that shall replace the orb usually held by the Statue of the Seven is the eye of the very first field tiller. The eye of the very first field tiller? <sighs> oh, Paimon gets it! All those Abyss mages are looking for the special eye, right? It would seem so. This whole thing keeps getting more complicated. But basically, it all has to do with that eerie statue of the Seven we saw, right? Yes. According to the talisman, the eye should be placed in the hands of the defiled statue, thereby imbuing the newly born god with the power to topple the divine thrones of Celestia. Oh boy, the Abyss Order sure isn't holding back with this plan! Since no one knows where the first field tiller is, how about we take the information about the statue as the starting point for our investigation? Yeah, that tone-deaf bard is too difficult to track down anyway. Let's go to the cathedral first and ask around. Maybe we'll learn something. The cathedral? Hmm. Huh? What's the matter, Dane? Nothing. Let's get moving. <laughs> 